We're back in the mechanism section for the recommendation to keep hemoglobin A1C below 5%. We've already covered the factors that contribute to elevated hemoglobin A1C. Now we're going to look at the mechanisms behind these factors. What common physiologic processes underlie these contributors to elevated hemoglobin A1C? We're going to start first with activation of the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is our fight or flight response. It's what happens in case of emergency. In modern life, we're not fighting or fleeing per se, but we still trigger our sympathetic nervous system on a regular basis. The two factors that can contribute to elevated sympathetic nervous system or the fight or flight response on a chronic basis, meaning not just when there's an imminent threat, but all the time, are depression and insufficient sleep. We saw how those two factors contribute to the rise in hemoglobin A1C. Now we're gonna look at why that occurs. When we're in a fight or flight response, our brain needs glucose. In order for our brain to get glucose, it has to be produced by the liver and the, and it can't be taken up by muscles. If it's taken up by muscles, it won't be available for the brain. The two hormones that govern our fight or flight response are epinephrine and cortisol. We'll start with cortisol. Both hormones, however, work in the same way. They work on the liver, enhancing gluconeogenesis. That means that during sleep deprivation or depression or other stressors, our Cortisol levels rise. This tells our liver to break down stored glucose, which is called glycogen, into glucose and release that sugar into the bloodstream. The other thing that cortisol does is it works on muscles and it decreases receptivity to insulin. Insulin normally allows glucose to enter the muscle cell. So by decreasing sensitivity to insulin, the muscle cells are no longer able to take up glucose despite rising levels of insulin. And both of these processes contribute to the ability of the brain to access more glucose in the bloodstream. The other hormone, epinephrine, has the same effect. It will work on the liver to break down glycogen to make it into glucose. It will also inhibit glucose uptake by muscle cells, which further contributes to elevations in blood sugar. What happens then is insulin resistance. Glucose is high in the bloodstream, but can't get into cells of the body. And so insulin continues to rise, but cells are resistant to its effect. This is one of the pathways whereby sympathetic stress or the fight or flight response caused by depression and insufficient sleep lead to high blood sugar and high insulin resistance. That is what leads to elevated hemoglobin A1C.